Hey everyone, it's Tammy at Walnut Creek Bath Boutique. Today is a little bit different of a video. I am actually in my basement, the main part of my basement, staying warm with a nice warm cup of coffee. There's like a foot of snow outside. Um, we, I need all the coffee I can get. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to come on and, and uh, share with you some lessons I've learned. I've just recently celebrated my fifth year anniversary uh, of February. February 10th was my fifth year anniversary of being in business. And I just started thinking about different things that I've learned over the years. Some were kind of easy and obvious. Some of them I'm still struggling to, to learn, uh, to implement the lessons that I've, I have learned the lessons. Now I have to learn to not do those things or that kind of thing. So, um, there's 10, I came up with 10 lessons. And so, like I said, some of them were pretty obvious, but my number one lesson learned that I still struggle with is number 10. So let's get on with the lesson. Number one is you really have to put yourself out there. You have to be brave and forward and you have to be engaging. And that is sometimes hard to do. I used to be, <laughs> if you couldn't believe it, I used to be a, a huge introvert. I, 30 years ago, I wouldn't talk to you. I wouldn't look at you. I, I mean, I was just such an introvert and I was so, so shy. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> but you really, over the years, it's not like I just woke up one day and I was no longer an introvert, but over the years, I've learned to um, engage with people and in the public. Uh, so being in business, if you aren't engaging, you aren't selling. I have gone to craft shows where I've seen other people selling soap and they just sit there they, they're not smiling they're not trying to have conversations um, you have to be engaging and on social media and in your personal life and when you're making sales you just have to be willing to put yourself out there not only to talk to your potential customers um, but just just be happy you know and be positive of what you're making and be confident of what you're making and and just get over any sort of shyness or uh, res re reservations you may have and just be okay to be silly be okay to be yourself and be okay to talk to people um, doing these videos was somewhat of a big step for me and I started small I started doing just very short little videos on Facebook and then kind of just grew from there. I got a little more comfortable with that kind of thing. And now I'm all over. <laughs> you can't keep me off of it. <laughs> all right, so that was number one. So number two, I'm trying to, I'm looking at my notes so that I don't ramble too much. Um, don't compare yourself with other businesses, right? So it's okay to not have a, uh, the sales that someone else does. I know when I first started, I, I really wanted to be able to produce a 50 par, fifty bar uh, batch of soap. Well, I can do that all day long, but I'm not going to sell that many. I'm just not there yet. And until I get there, I have no business making a 50 bar batch of soap. So, but I see all these YouTubers making these great big batches of soap and I think I, I, I should be able to do that. I, I should be able to sell that. Well, maybe it'll come, but it's not there yet. And so um, I, I had to stop comparing my business and where I was at in my business with all these other people I see selling, you know, out, you know, within minutes of going live with their sale, you know, their, their online shop will go live and within 10 minutes they're completely sold out i'm not there and uh, i may never be there and that's okay i don't have to be there to be happy and with what i'm doing so i had to learn to stop comparing myself and my business and where i was at with everybody else um yeah i that was the lesson learned i had to just stop comparing myself with with other people i see um especially on youtube you know <laughs> so Number three, just quickly, take a break. You know, I am I am really bad about pushing myself too hard. And I don't know if that's just being a woman or if it's just me or what, but if I have something to make, I make it. 
and then I have to label it, and then I have to package it, and then I have to make the pictures. And it's just a constant, it's a constant doing something, right? I work full time. I work 40 hours a week, and then every night I come home and I have a little bit of work to do. Every weekend I come, I'm home and I'm working. And it's hard for me to make myself stop. And I have learned that I will burn myself out quickly, especially now that I'm like 51. It's easier <laughs> to burn myself out. I don't have the energy I used to. But it, you know, it you have you have to just step back from it sometimes. And I have learned to just shut my laptop and set it aside. You know, I don't have to work until 10 o'clock at night on whatever I'm doing on there. Uh, editing videos. So I keep adding things too, right? So now I have to edit videos. Well, I'm not very fast at that yet. It can sometimes take a whole day <laughs> to edit one video. And so I, I have to just learn to walk away from that. And that's a difficult lesson for me to learn. You want to have joy in what you're doing. And um, there have been times when I've been put, putting so much stress on myself that I, were, I was losing the joy that I was having. So I'm, I'm not there. I, I do walk away. So, a hard lesson to learn for me, especially, is just walking away from it and letting it go. All right, number four. I, I don't have these numbered on my list. I hope <laughs> number four is don't apologize for your prices. I still do that. I still apologize for my prices to my friends. You know, I do, I don't give away much actually. I, I am trying to make money, right? And my close friends, I will give a break of. Of course I'm gonna give a break on, on prices to my, my close friends. But I still find myself apologizing to my close friends about what I'm charging them. And they don't care. They want to support me, and they're okay paying with whatever I, you know, whatever I tell them that I need. Um, so don't apologize, and and don't undersell yourself. Don't undersell your products. You should be making a profit on every single sale, even if it's on like a clearance. Make sure you're at least making a little bit of a profit on those clearance items, because you put time, sweat oil, whatever, you know, you put a lot into that, um, a lot into the packaging and the, and the work that I don't think people really understand. A lot of customers don't understand what is all involved in making any of our products. And we should never have to apologize for what we charge for that. And, you know, I've, I've had to increase my prices here this last few months. No one's even batted an eye. You know, so don't apologize for your prices. And if somebody says at like a craft show or something, well, I can get it, you know, for a dollar cheaper down there. It's like, okay, that's fine. Go get it. You know, that's that's good good on you. Find something cheaper, but I'm not gonna apologize it and I'm not gonna I'm not going to uh uh I'm gonna respect myself and the prices that I charge and, and I'm respecting myself, I'm respecting my business if I charge a certain amount and don't apologize for that. Okay, so we're getting into the five here. Let's see. Number five, <laughs> I had to count. <laughs> Number five is just a quick one, social media. Of course, you have to be out on social media. People will forget you in a heartbeat. You have to be very active on social media. I'm okay on Facebook once, twice, maybe even sometimes three times a week, I'll post something on Facebook. Instagram, I'm horrible at because it takes my phone and I don't, I can't figure out putting pictures from my phone that I may take with my camera to my phone to the Instagram. It's just, I don't like it, <laughs> but I'm trying to do better. But I'm pretty good on Facebook, but you really do have to be, you have to be in their face. You have to remind them you're there. They are inundated with all these other posts. Every once in a while they have to see that you are still there. So social media is so important, so, so important. And you just have to be out there and, and be active on it regularly. I am still learning that. I'm still struggling with that. And I probably will always struggle with it, let's be honest. Okay, so the last five are really the things I'm still struggling with the most. This is a tough one. Number six, 
is options. I struggle with options, <laughs> like way too many. I have 18 different soaps on my shelf right now. I have, I'll have like six or seven different fragrances of, of um, shampoos or lotions or, you know, it just it doesn't matter. You need to limit the options that you give your customers. And that is something I am still struggling with. I still, to this day, take way too many soaps to craft shows. I have way too many soaps on my online website. Um, it over It's overwhelming, and it's true. It does overwhelm them. I, I read on a Facebook post years ago that you should only take like four cents of soap, only take four different soaps to a craft show. I'm thinking, no, of course you want to take more than four. <laughs> that was, I was like, and everybody was agreeing with that. I was like, what? There's no way I would stop at a table with only four soaps. I just wouldn't. But, you know, I, I think for me the sweet spot is that 12 is pretty is pretty good good number of bars to choose from, especially if you're offering like a four four. And, you know, this is what it costs per bar. You buy four and you get a discount. So I think that 10 to 14, I would never go over 14. I think 14 is probably a little too much. Uh, but you want to give enough options to offer that for for a certain amount because that kills it with the sales. You want to be able to at a craft show offer them a discount for for buying more, and um, they will almost always go for that if they're only if they're buying they're only they'll buy one or they'll buy four, right? And so you have to give them the options to choose the four that they want, and. Um, so I, but I struggle. I, there's times when I take 17, 18 different soaps and I should never ever do that. Um, I'm trying really hard uh, to only take like that 10 uh, bars of soap. And then if I sell out of one, I, have, I can have something under the table I can bring back up. So that's kind of the plan for this year. I have way too many uh, creams. I make a, a goat's milk hand cream. It's a very, very popular product of mine. I have too many scents and people can't choose. They, they're smelling all of the different scents and they just can't decide which ones they want. I really need to have like three for them to choose from. Um, and, and you choose your, you know, a floral, a, a clean, um, and I don't know, maybe a fruity one or whatever. But three or four is all I really need to have on the shelves at any given time. So yeah, options, options is hard. It's a hard, hard lesson. Five years in, I'm still struggling with. <laughs> still struggling with that one. Ah, okay. Num what number are we in? Seven? Number seven. Don't make more product than you can reasonably sell. I I'm, I'm, I'm starting to do a little better on this. I am still struggling with my soaps. I have way more soap on my shelf than I'm going to sell the spring, but I'm hoping the summer that the craft shows will pick up and everything. So I'm hoping to get back to the craft shows and sell some in person because that's my best sells actually is it's craft shows. Um, but I tend to over make everything and I tend to make too much of before I've tested my customers with that. So I made a uh, face serum. I love my face serum. Love it. It doesn't sell. It doesn't really sell. And um, I made a face scrub, face scrub. Actually, I posted a video of this sugar scrub for your face. I've not sold one. Not one. Why did I make it? I haven't. I need to test my my uh, customers. See what they're interested in. They don't, my customers aren't buying that. So I wasted a lot of time, effort, and money in making that when I'm not selling it. Or on the on another kind of, on top of that, you make more than you can reasonably sell. So, you know, I at one point, and I had a purpose for it, okay? I didn't, I didn't do it without a purpose, but... Two years ago, I made a hundred a hundred bar batch soaps, and I made probably twelve batches of different soaps, a hundred bars. Max wax melts, I made like thirty 
of each scent and I made a ton of them. Well, there's a purpose for it and that is I was sending my stuff to Covered Bridge and the Covered Bridge festival is like half a million people or something like that, 250, 500,000 people go through Covered Bridge every year. And I sent my products with another uh, a person and I had no idea what to expect. I had, I, I, I was just, I had no idea. I've never taken my products to this, this show before, this festival, and I didn't sell any of them. I mean, I barely, barely, I didn't even break even. I lost money. Not, not even just my rent. I lost money. The sales weren't there. And there was a lot of reasons for that, location and everything. There were reasons for that. Um, so, you know, I made more than I could reasonably sell. I should have made a lot less and I should have been okay with selling out. But I wasn't. I wasn't okay with selling out. I'm still not okay with selling out. <laughs> so I'm trying really hard. You know, I'm gonna try to do, if Covered Bridge happens this fall, I'm gonna go. Uh, I have no idea what to expect. I have no no clue what to expect for Covered Bridge this year. But um, I'm going to be very careful not to put too many different soaps on my shelf at one time and not make too many. I'm, I, I want to, if I sell out, I sell out. And I'm going to be okay with that. <laughs> All right, what number are we on? Number eight. Okay, I think it's eight, right? Eight. So this is difficult. And this is a, along those lines of comparing yourself with other people. Don't buy bigger quantities of ingredients than you need and that you can use before it expires. I'm gonna fess up on something. Last fall, <laughs> I threw away 58 bottles of fragrance oil. Some of them were opened some of them weren't 58 bottles because when I would go look for that bottle I, I could I just heart-wrenching right some of them only had like an ounce or two in them but some of them had quite a bit I don't even know how much money I had to throw away last year they expired they got too old but when I was ordering these fragrance oils I so, okay, well, eight ounces was, you know, $2 an ounce, but 16 ounces was only $1.52 an ounce. So I bought the 16 ounces. Never tried the fragrance oil. Didn't know if I would like it. Didn't know if my customers would like it. And here I am throwing away 58 bottles of fragrance oil because they expired. I didn't like them. Um, I never had, got around to using them. And... I was, I was just so disgusted with myself when I did that. I, when I counted those bottles, I was just so mad at myself over the money I wasted in those fragrances. So I made it, I made a deal with myself. I am going to buy 16 ounces. If I know I'm going to be able to use them in soap and wax, I'll buy a 16 ounce bottle. If I know the fragrance oil and I know I'm going to use it, I'll go ahead and buy a 16 ounce. If it is for wax melts only, I'm only going to buy eight ounces or less. If it is for um, lotions only, four ounces or less, four ounces. I am not buying a 16 ounce bottle of fragrance oil and see if I like it in a fragrance oil, in a lotion. I, I can't, that was so, so wasteful and a hard lesson learned. And I have learned that lesson. I do not buy fragrance oils unless I have a plan for them. And another thing I'm doing this year, which I've already failed at, is not buying any more fragrance oil until I use up what I have on my shelf. I'm still buying a few fragrance oils here and there mostly like one or two ounce samples to see if I like something. Um, or, you know, I'm, I'm like almost out of black sea. Well, obviously I'm going to have to have black sea because I have to make wax melts. I'm going to buy black sea, but no new fragrance oils this year that are any more than like a four ounce trial thing just to see what it smells like. But I'm buying a lot of, um, one ounce samples this time and I used to never buy like they'll have the sales of 
of one ounce samples and that I, I didn't like that because it was too much per ounce you know I, I could buy 16 ounces and only get it for like half price per ounce but you know I, I'm also throwing them out so anyway that was a hard oh my gosh that was a hard lesson to learn hard oh <laughs> I just get nauseous thinking about it oh. yeah don't buy more than you can reasonably use up before it gets expired and don't buy just because it's cheaper per ounce. No. And, and you know, you see all these other people like on YouTube buying these, using these great big jugs of fragrance oil. I'm not there yet. That's okay. I may never be there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my dinky little four, eight, and sometimes sixteen ounce bottles. <sighs> okay. So nine is have a budget, you know. I have a budget. I have been in business for five years and I st still technically don't have a budget, like on paper. It never even dawned on me to have a budget. You need a budget for your ingredients. You need a budget for advertising. You need a budget for your office supplies. I have I still haven't gotten to the point where I have it written down. I do budget advertising, so I do promoted posts on Facebook and Instagram, and I budget in like, you know, anywhere from 20 to $30 a month. Not a lot, not a lot, but I will spend, and once I hit that, I don't spend anymore. And um, so 20 or $30 a month, depending on where it's at, I do have an advertising budget now. I really need to, to get it all written down. How much am I spending on ingredients and um, shipping supplies? And how much am I spending on, uh, cardstock and and labels i i have no idea what i'm spending on that in a year i have no idea right now so that's one of the things i want to do this year is work on getting that budget and figuring out how much i'm spending how much of that is wasted so that i can kind of trim that down less waste and then um follow up like a true budget St that's a hard one i and I'm still, I'm still not there yet. And last, number 10, is another hard one for me that I still struggle with. And that is, don't get caught up making everything you see on YouTube or, or on blogs. I uh, follow Humble Be and Me, and I wanna make every single thing Marie makes. I wanna make it all. <laughs> I want to. She, she's, awesome and I and she's a wonderful formulator she's very very talented and I will go out and purchase ingredients because I'm gonna make that that whatever that was six months later I have no idea what that ingredients for I have no idea why I bought it and I have no idea what I'm gonna use it in you know and I just get so caught up in wanting to make everything I see I enjoy making that I'm wasting my time and money um, making things that are are not something my customers would buy or something that is like a one-off. I mean, I don't even remember where I got the formulation. It may have been Lotion Crafter. They have a really good formu formulation guide. You know, they have really good um, formulas. So I tried like an under eye, uh, an under eye gel. And so I made it. I I have I bought a 16 ounce bottle, a 16 ounce bag of like caffeine powder. I've used like 10 grams of it, and it's still sitting there. And I made this thing one time. I get so caught up in wanting to try these new things that I am making poor business decisions that I'm getting a lot better at. I, I'm seeing these things. I still watch Marie. I still watch the Humble Bee and Me faithfully, but I'm doing it more for enjoyment and learning rather than the thought of making everything that she makes. Even though that, still, that desire is still there, I'm not running out and purchasing all the ingredients to make something unless, unless I think that, you know, I really have a purpose for it. I want to, I want to be a little bit more um, uh, purposeful in my decision making. I want to be a little bit more. I want to. I want to. I want to grow, 
And if I keep making some of these financial mistakes I've made in the past, I'm never going to get to the point where I want to get, you know, so I want to grow and I need to take a step back sometimes and say, is this the, is this a right decision for you at this point in your, in your journey? Right. And a lot of times it's not, <laughs> I need to just take a step back and say, you know, Tammy, talking to the third person, Tammy, you don't need this. <laughs> So that's it. That's my 10 lessons. Some of them hard, hard lessons learned. Some of them, <laughs> it's just like, oh boy. <laughs> and some of them I'm still struggling with. I'm still struggling with it. I, I just bought fragrance oil. They were small. They were just testers. But did I really need that fragrance oil? No, no, I really didn't. <laughs> no, I really didn't. So some of them are just still lessons in progress, we'll call it. <laughs> but we're getting along. I'm gonna get off. If here. you are a small business person and have any lessons that you've learned, drop them down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to read what other people have learned over the years and uh, see where we're at. Maybe I can learn some lessons from you too. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.